In this video, we deploy Windows applications from the Azure Compute Gallery. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraldos. Not too long ago, the Azure Image Gallery was renamed to the Azure Compute Gallery. Along with the name change came the ability to package and distribute applications. In this video, we review how to create applications in the Azure Compute Gallery, then deploy them to a Windows VM. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities at udemy.com and become a member of the channel for early access to new videos. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. So what is Azure Compute Gallery applications and why should you care? There's no shortages of ways to add applications to a VM in Azure, but not all options work for every situation. With applications in the Azure Compute Gallery, we add application packages to the gallery, then assign and install the application to virtual machines during or after the VM is deployed. Say, for example, that a common web browser installed on just about every Windows OS was no longer supported, and you had to make sure that all new VM builds in Azure had a supported web browser. We could create a package and add it to the deployment so it's available at the first login. Azure Compute Gallery also provides for replicating application packages to different regions. These applications are then available at each of those regions. Let's review how images and application packages are laid out in the Azure Compute Gallery. We start with the Azure Compute Gallery. A compute gallery can have one or more application or image definitions. We can have one or more versions of the applications or images within that definition. We can specify the version of the application or image during deployment, or simply select to use the latest version. We can then replicate these images or application versions to other regions. Deploying applications with the Azure Compute Gallery is currently in preview. It works with Windows and Linux applications. This video covers deploying an executable and MSI package application. We can assign up to five applications per VM, and there's a limit of one gig for the application size. Also, reboots are tricky with application deployments because it disconnects the server agent. If an application requires a reboot, add it as the last application to install. Finally, we can only add one version of an application to a VM. One other item we have to cover before we get started is how application file naming is handled. Let's say we have an application definition named Chrome. The MSI file is called Google Chrome Standalone Enterprise 64. When we deploy the application to the VM, the name of the file changes to the name of the definition, Chrome for this example. We have to add a command to rename Chrome to Google Chrome Standalone Enterprise 64.msi for this example. We rename the file with the move command specifying the source and destination file name. Also, if there's a config file used for the installation, it's downloaded as the definition name with underscore config appended to the end. That file will need to be renamed as well. Linux uses the shell as its command interpreter, and Windows uses command.exe. We can run another interpreter if it's installed on the VM, such as PowerShell, by calling the PowerShell executable. I'm going to do a walkthrough next. The Azure Compute Gallery is in place, as well as the storage account. We'll upload the application files to the storage account, then use them when we build the application version. We'll add Adobe Reader and Google Chrome as the applications, One's an MSI and the other one's an executable. Then deploy them to a new and a running VM. Let's get started in the portal. Here we are in the storage account. Let's start by creating a container for our applications. We'll call it Applications. You could create a container for each application or just add all your applications to one container. In this case, we'll just use one container. From here, we'll upload the Chrome and Adobe Reader application package. These are easy to find online, and I'll include links to the download page and the command file we'll use shortly. The link to that is below. These examples also provide an example of a MSI and an EXE installer. We'll go into Applications and upload our files. Okay, our uploads are complete. This virtual machine and the blob storage container are in the same region in Azure, so that didn't take long. If you're uploading these from a local machine, it could take a bit longer. So we'll just close this out. 
These applications are copied from the storage account to the Azure Compute Gallery. Unfortunately, we can't upload the files to the compute gallery directly from the local computer. Let's create the application next. Here we are in the compute gallery. This one is in central US. Let's create our Adobe Reader application. We'll go to Add, VM Application Definition. Make sure your subscription and resource group are correct. Add the application name and set the region. It should be the same region as the storage account. Set the OS type, Windows for this example, and go to Publishing Options. These are optional. Add a description, end of time date, and links to the EULA privacy statement and release notes. We'll leave the rest blank and go to Tags. Add tags as needed and review and create. Once validation passes, click Create. That creates the application definition. Next, we need to create the application version. The version is what will have the actual installable files. Before that, let's add the Google Chrome application definition next. We'll go back to the compute gallery and add VM application definition. Everything's just like before, only the name is different. So Windows OS type. We'll give it a description, go to Review and Create, and Create. Here we are back at the Compute Gallery. An application definition can have multiple versions, just like Adobe Reader can have different versions of the same application. Let's go into our Chrome application definition. From here, we'll add a new version by going to Add. Make sure the subscription and the resource group are correct. Supply a version number. This has to be in a two dot format. Make sure the region is the same as the storage account we added the installation files to and go to browse to the source application package. We'll pick our storage account, our application container, and the MSI file we uploaded for Chrome. Next is the install script. If you're lucky, you can find these online. It can take some trial and error to get it right. I had to stand up a test server and validate the install and uninstall command before creating the application version. Let's take a look at the command for Chrome. First, we run the move command because the file is downloaded to the local machine with the definition name, not the name of the application package. All this first part does is rename the file. The ampersand concatenates multiple commands. Then it runs the start and wait for the MSI installer and passes the Google Chrome install file along with the quiet install switch and logging. And again, I'll make sure that this file is available. Just check for the links below. Let's copy this command. And we'll go back to the portal and add that as our install script. We also need the uninstall script. This is just a removal command for Chrome. Here's the uninstall command. We'll go over getting this uninstall command later in the video. We'll paste that in. There's an option for an update script. Add that if you have one. If not, changing to a new version will first uninstall the previous version before it installs in the next version. Add a configuration file if needed. You can also exclude the application from latest. This is good for testing before making it available as a new version. Let's go to replication. We can only deploy this application to servers in the same region. You can add replicas to different regions here. For example, if I had servers in East US 2 as well, I could add a replica in East US 2. I'm not gonna do that for this example, but it is an option. Go to tags, add tags as needed, and we'll go to review and create. Once validation is done, click Create. This will take a couple minutes. It has to copy the install file from the storage account into the Azure Compute Gallery. I'll pause here and come back once it's finished. That finished, let's do the same for Adobe Reader next. We'll go into Adobe Reader. 
add a new version. We'll give the version a number. Let's browse for our source application. Let's take a look at the install script. The install script renames the file, then runs the executable with the silent install option, along with a switch that accepts the EULA. Let's copy and paste this in. And here's our uninstall script. And again, both the install and uninstall script are required. We'll walk through finding the uninstall script shortly. In order to find the uninstall script, the application has to be installed. That's why I'm waiting till later to show you. That's the minimum required. Let's go to replication. And again, we'll just leave it in central US. Go to tags, add tags as needed, review and create and create. And again, this is gonna take a little bit. So I'll pause here and come back once the deployment is finished. That finished? Let's deploy a new computer next and install Chrome as part of the deployment. Let's create a new VM. I'm gonna work through this quickly. Make sure it's deployed to the same region as a replica of the application. Central US for this example. I'll use Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session version 21H1 for this example. We'll provide a username and password. Make sure we're licensed. Disk isn't important, we're just testing. Go to networking, make sure we select the correct network. And we'll keep going to advanced. Under the advanced tab, we have the VM application preview tab. Let's select a VM application to install. Here are the two applications available in this region. And also notice we can select different versions. If we had different versions. Let's select Chrome and save. If we did have multiple applications, we could select the install order, but no preference for this because we only have one. Let's go to review and create. Once validation passes, we'll create. I'll pause here until it finishes and then log into the new VM. Here we are at the new VM. Notice we have Chrome installed at the first login. That's definitely not on the standard Windows image from Azure. Let's add Adobe Reader next. To add Adobe Reader, let's go back to the VM in the portal. Here we are at the VM in the portal. Let's go to Extensions and Applications under Settings. We'll go to VM Applications. Here we can see Chrome. Go to Add Application. We'll select Adobe Reader. Save. And here again, we can select the installation order if we had selected more than one. Click Save. That says it successfully updated the virtual machine. Let's go back into the virtual machine and see what's happening. It's not there yet, but if we go into Task Manager, look at all the processes, it shows an Adobe process running. Let's give it a couple seconds to finish the installation. Okay, it finished, and now we have Adobe Reader on the computer. But what if we want to remove an application? We can simply go back to the VM in the portal, and under Extensions and Applications, we have the option to uninstall. Let's uninstall that application. Now if we go back to that virtual machine, we'll give it a minute or two to run the uninstaller. And just like that, Adobe Reader is removed. That brings us to the uninstall string. Let's see where we can find that next. Sometimes you have to work these commands out on a test computer 
before creating the application version in the compute gallery. That includes getting the uninstall command. To find the uninstall command, go to the registry after the application is installed. We'll go to HKEY Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows, Current Version, Uninstall. If you can't find the application name from this view, we can go to each one and look for the display name. This is FS Logics. We'll keep going through. And there's Google Chrome. Under Uninstall String, that's our Uninstall String for Chrome. And note that the ID may change with different versions of the application. We use this string with the slash QN at the end for the quiet uninstall. We can cancel out. So what if it doesn't work? Let's talk about troubleshooting next. There's not a whole lot of detail we can get, but if we go back to PowerShell, we can run the get azvm command with a status argument to view the deployment details. Let's run that for the computer we just deployed. We'll make this a little bigger. Here's the output for the extension. Honestly, even when it fails, the details are not that clear, but it will at least let you know that it did fail. Keep in mind that this is still in preview. Hopefully getting the status will be a little easier once it's generally available. That is how to create, deploy, and remove applications with the Azure Compute Gallery. I hope this helps you with deploying applications from the Azure Compute Gallery. Keep in mind that this is in public preview and may have some changes once it goes GA. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.